Today I was pleased to find that I got a package in the mail from Stone Age Gamer. And let's just cut to the chase. This is the long awaited for Super Everdrive. Now before we take a look at this thing, let's go over the details and get some of that stuff out of the way. So like I said, I got this from StoneAgeGamer.com. As far as I know, that is the one and only official place to buy this in North America. Uh, now he sells uh, basically three different versions. Uh, first you can buy the board only. This is $84.99. Basically you just get the bare circuit board without the DSP-1 chip installed. And I'll talk about what the DSP-1 chip is in a little while. You also get one free firmware upgrade coupon for it. So if they come out with a firmware upgrade, you can send it back with the coupon, he'll flash it, and you'll get it back with the upgrades. The second version is called the Deluxe Edition. It's $119.99. It still does not include the DSP-1 chip, but you'll get this one in a cartridge. You'll get it in a North American-style Super Nintendo cartridge. You'll get it with a case, a 2 gigabyte SD card, the user manual, two firmware upgrade coupons. You'll get some stickers, and um, you also have an option to get a universal cartridge shell. Now this is a $5 option that will basically change the North American Super Nintendo style shell and give you a universal shell that will fit in a Japanese Super Famicom uh, a PAL Super Nintendo and the North American Super Nintendo so it basically fits in any form of Super Nintendo Super Famicom now the third option is the ultimate edition now this is what I got this does have the DSP one chip installed so in that regards it's pretty much worth it alone just for that now what the DSP one chip is is basically an extra processor that's in certain cartridge games. Um, most of the Mode 7 games, for example, uh, Pilot Wings and Super Mario Kart come to mind. Now, if you don't have the DSP-1 chip in the Super EverDrive, it's not going to run games that originally had the DSP-1 chip in them. So, for example, it's not going to run Super Mario Kart. So, with the Ultimate Edition, that is the main difference. You're getting the DSP-1 chip. Otherwise, it's very similar to the Deluxe Edition. Uh, it's got the case, the 2 gigabyte SD card, the user manual, the two firmware upgrade coupons, the stickers. Uh, and the next difference is that you do not have to pay for the option to change to the universal cartridge shell. So you can pick if you want the North American Super Nintendo style shell or if you want the universal shell so that it will fit in any Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Last but not least, there is a color option. Uh, it's a $5 option. Once again, you can pick to get a, either a charcoal gray, which is the one I got. It's um, more of a dark gray. It's almost black compared to what the standard Super Famicom or Super Nintendo cartridge would look like. There's also a midnight blue and a wine red. And once again, that's a $5 option on the Ultimate Edition. All right, so here's the Super EverDrive. As you can see, very nicely packaged in one of these sort of universal clam shells. So we can see here, Super EverDrive Ultimate Edition. We have not one, but two free firmware updates. We have the uh, already mentioned stickers, Super EverDrive and Stone Age Gamer and of course the user manual now like I said this is in the charcoal case and it looks amazing very nice these are not made from donor carts these are custom made for Stone Age Gamer so yeah very nice job on the cartridge shell and uh, I mean talk about detail even the SD card has a Super EverDrive label on it. Alright, so here we have uh, three different versions of the Super Nintendo. We have the original Japanese Super Famicom, we have the original North American Super Nintendo, and we have the Super Nintendo 2. 
As I mentioned, this is the universal cartridge, so this was designed to fit in the Super Famicom or a PAL Super Nintendo, an original Super Nintendo, and the top or the uh, SNES 2 here. Now it's a little bit tight on the Super Nintendo 2. You really got to squeeze it in there, but yeah, see, it's really tight. But it fits nonetheless, so that's great. And uh, like I said, I would recommend going for this version as it works in anything, and why would I want to limit myself to one that would fit in the Super Nintendo and not the Super Famicom? I think that is an awesome idea to have these universal uh, cartridge shells made up. Okay, so I'm back here again with the Super Everdrive in the Super Famicom. I'll just turn that on. Those of you familiar with previous EverDrive products, like I've shown the EverDrive, the original for the Sega Genesis, you'll uh, be familiar with this menu. It's very similar. Obviously, we know what the Start Game option is for, and we know what the Select Game option is for. Uh, so I'll go into the options here. Now, Reset Return is new. Basically, what this lets you do is, uh, right now, if you're playing a game and you hit Reset, it won't reset the game it'll actually bring you back to the EverDrive menu just like as if you turned off the system and then turned it back on with the um, return off what will happen is if you're playing a game and you reset it it will just reset that game more like you would expect as if it was you know the real game that you were playing and the autosave feature here will automatically back up the save states uh, of the games that you've just played to your SD card so every time that you flash a new game, it will actually back up the previous played game's save states to your SD card automatically. So that's um, a new feature as far as I know. I don't believe that's on the EverDrive unless it's been added with updates. And we'll go into the toolbox and talk about updates. Um, here we have the option for save load SRAM. That's to manually save and load your save states to and from your SD card, just like in the uh, original EverDrive. Um, device information, we're going to notice one thing is it does say FAT16. Um, of course there will eventually be a upgrade to uh, make it FAT32 and allow for SDHC cards. You have the format SD option, very similar to the EverDrive. They recommend when you first use an SD card on here, instead of formatting the SD card in your PC, to actually put it in here and format it in here. There's the update OS, obviously, when updates come out, that's how you do it. And really, that's about it. So let's go into the Select Games option. Now, with FAT16, you have a limitation to how many files you can have in one directory. Um, but obviously, even if you didn't, I don't think you'd really want to have like a thousand games in one directory. So it's, it's kind of good, regardless to sort of organize them somewhat alphabetically. So I have 0 to F, F to N, and O to Z. And uh, I have about 140 games in each directory, so there's still some room for adding more. Um, as I've mentioned with the EverDrive products, even if you're not into pirating and you want to own all the real games, which I do, regardless of if I have them on here or not, um, if there's a game that I like and I see it, I'll and the price is right, of course, I'll pick it up. But more importantly with the EverDrive is it allows you to play games that were never released in your region. For example, here's all the Sailor Moon games. Obviously those were only released in Japan. Even more cool here is here's all the uh, BS games. And these are for the satellite uh, modem back in the day. Uh, back in the day in Japan, they actually had a modem for the Super Famicom. And it was sort of like... Um, I guess it would have been on a cable system where it was strictly broadband. In other words, you had to sort of wait for a certain time for Nintendo to um, offer a, a game. And it was usually upgrades for games like in F-Zero. Uh, I believe that's like upgraded tracks and stuff that weren't in the original game. Uh, with Zelda, they actually released, uh, I believe, three or four uh, basically mini episodes that you got to play. Um, and here's Excite Bike, which I mean, I don't know if Excite Bike even came out on the Super Nintendo in Japan, 
But either way, this is stuff that you would never get to play on a Super Nintendo or a Super Famicom because this is stuff that with the modem was broadcast at that time and once that was gone, these games were gone. So some of these, there's absolutely no way to play these, you know, other than on an emulator, obviously. But um, once again, having this allows you to do that. Also, of course, um, home brews and stuff like that. Now, as I mentioned, the Super Everdrive, this specific model has the DSP-1 chip in it. Uh, so it will work with games like Mario Kart and Pilot Wings. Of course, it doesn't have the Super FX chip in it, and to me, that's not a surprise. You have to understand that there is actually different variations of the Super FX chip. If they put a Super FX chip in here, would non-Super FX chip games still work? And of course, Super FX2 games like uh, Stunt Tracks FX and Doom wouldn't work. And if they put a Super FX2 chip in there, games like Doom would work, but would Star Fox work properly? Probably not. It's probably not even possible for them to have put uh, a Super FX chip in there. So yeah, Super FX chip games don't work. Some of the other games like the, um, I believe it's the SA1 chip that's in most notably Super Mario RPG. So unfortunately Super Mario RPG doesn't work. And we're really only talking about maybe 30 in total that don't work. So it's really not that big of a deal, okay? Um, so let's show it obviously playing something and I think for the sake of it um, I'll actually learn my alphabet <coughs> first and then we'll go to uh, under M now I want to show you Mario Kart but of course it is under S <laughs> I went into the right directory in the first place uh, because it is of course Super Mario Kart once again when you find a game you want to play, you just hit start. That's all you have to do. You hit start. It's flashing it in there. You'll notice it actually says cart type DSP1. So obviously even at the ROM level it knows that it needs the DSP1 chip for this. And as you would expect, it runs perfectly. Now keep in mind this is because my Super EverDrive Ultimate Edition has the DSP-1 chip in it. Obviously, if yours doesn't have the DSP-1 chip in it, Super Mario Kart isn't going to work. As I mentioned before with the EverDrive, I don't really think I need to mention it again, but just in case some of you are new to the whole idea of the flash carts, this is not emulation in any way, shape, or form. This is the original game code running on real original hardware. So, once you get the game in there, it's no different as far as the Super Nintendo is concerned. And therefore, as you would expect, the games run exactly as they should. Okay? Unless, like I said, you know, they have some special processors in them that aren't supported. So I'm going to hit reset here. And because we have it reset return um, on, it brings it back to the Super EverDrive. It returns you back to the Super EverDrive. Otherwise, it would have just reset Super Mario Kart. So I'm going to go to another game, and I'm going to go to something that was never released here. Uh, how about... This is the Sailor Moon RPG. Now, another thing that you might want to look for, if you're into some of the Japanese RPGs that were never released in North America, Final Fantasy IV obviously never released in North America, um, but you can find actually like fan-made English translated ROMs, and of course those will work on here. So once again, the ability to play games that you couldn't normally otherwise play on real hardware for a lot of people may be reason enough to buy one of these and even if you own all the real games and you know just having them all in one cartridge maybe some of you might want it for that reason uh, for me it's a little bit of both it's really cool to see some of the games that never got released 
Um, earlier today, I was playing um, a Sailor Moon beat 'em up with my girlfriend, <laughs> and um, it wasn't a bad game. Uh, and you know, like I said, it's cool to see games that never got released, uh, Japanese-only games. You might find some prototypes or demos, stuff that never got released anywhere, and uh, you might find some homebrew. But as you can see, even the Japanese games, of, well actually this isn't a Super Famicom, so that's kind of irrelevant. But of course, even if this was in a Super Nintendo, it wouldn't make a difference. And if it's in Japanese, obviously it's pretty useless to me. I obviously couldn't play this game, but once again, you can look out for uh, fan-made uh, English translations. Uh, and sometimes they'll make those into ROMs. Um, and I managed to find some of those uh, for some other games. But anyways, as you can see, it's uh, working exactly as I had, you know, expected it to work. Of course, it doesn't work with some of those Super FX games, and SA1 games, but like I said, if you add up all the games that this doesn't work on, you might have 30 games, maybe 40 if you don't have the DSP1 chip. We're talking about... Uh, minuscule percentage of games that actually don't work on the Super EverDrive. And like I said, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Super FX games don't work. Uh, really, there's no flashcards that Super FX games work on. Um, so that was expected. Also, what was, it, what was expected from me was, well, another EverDrive product that just works just works the way it's supposed to, just works the way you expect, um, and it's really easy to use. 